Hey, what's up? This is Gizmo, and today we're going to be doing a review for the brand new iOS 6. There are so many new features in here, there's a lot to go over. This is running on my iPhone 4S, so I'm uh, just testing it out. It gave me some time to, you know, play around with the new settings and new features, and I haven't even gotten to dive into everything. But, um, it's running pretty smooth so far. It strangely changed a couple settings of mine, but I changed them back. So, the first thing we're going to go over is the brand new Maps feature. Um, we no longer have Google Maps. Eventually we'll come out with a third party version. So a really cool thing with Flyover, it gives you like a 3D look. You can move around mountains, you can move around things. You can see the Hollywood sign is actually a 3D, you know, symbol. It's, it's set up to move around. They actually paid attention to like certain things like that. Um, you can change your perspective by taking two fingers and swiping up or down gives it a 3D perspective. You can get really close in here. It's not like Street View. They don't have Street View on here. They call this their flyover. And um, it basically gives you a 3D accurate GPS pinpoint, you know, replica of the city. It's actually pretty sick looking. Um, down to every single corner. Still loading these backgrounds. It's taking a second. As you can see here, I could just fly around the city. It looks like a video game. Um, the standard map view is now vector based, so it pretty much, you know, it'll be sharp and high quality no matter how close you zoom in. So you can see the text moving around, rotating. I love the rotating feature. Um, you just take your, your two fingers and do like a clockwise or counterclockwise design movement. Um, Everything that is a restaurant or a store, you can tap right onto it. Here's a school, so you can tap that, get right information right there on the school. Um, it shows you overhead, nice little view, directions right to there. We have turn by turn navigation now on here, which is great. So Siri will talk to you and tell you where to go. As if she doesn't tell us to do enough, you know. Here is a Starbucks. We can click on this Starbucks. There's eight reviews on Yelp for this Starbucks. And uh, you could go here, read the reviews. People will talk about you know what they think of that one. Here's some photos taken from that exact Starbucks. Um, pretty crazy how you could connect everything up together. You could add a photo simply by tapping add photo. You have all the options that we used to have before, drop a pin, we could print out locations, we could set up satellite, hybrid, show a traffic. Traffic is a great thing when I'm traveling around, especially in LA. Um, you know, we have some signs here, is the road closed. With the traffic enabled, it'll be able to recalculate your ETA. You know, if you're late, if you're stuck in traffic, it'll let you know, you know, how much longer it'll take. If there's a car accident or a traffic jam, you know, it'll tell you uh, there's just a little slowdown or whatever's going on. Finally, Siri gets turn-by-turn -turn navigation. It's so much easier to use, you know, right here in the pocket and, your, you know, wherever you go. If we do directions from here, we could go to this location and she'll tell us where we have to go. Starting route to West 5th Street. Head north on Basically. Hagai Avenue. Basically, she'll tell us where to go. You can see the upcoming street signs ahead. Um, get an overview of where you're going. And you can get around with Sears. She'll tell exactly where to go if there's traffic, all that good stuff. Upcoming road signs, exits. She does it all. Siri gets an update, she gets a lot smarter. We could ask her about movies, we could ask her about restaurants, we could ask her about sports. So I'm gonna say, when are the Philadelphia Eagles playing again? The Eagles. Cardinals game is Sunday at 1.05 p.m. So we have a little schedule here, thanks to Yahoo, they deliver that. We could ask her... Tell me about Michael Vick. Here's Michael Vick. So you can read up information about him, you know, his, his passing, all his yards he's gotten for the season, sacks, you know, all that good stuff. What movies are playing between 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock? I found quite a number of movies playing nearby for today from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. So I can see here it shows me movies only playing in the times that I'm interested in. So if I want to check out this Resident Evil movie, 
You can see when one, one is in 3D. You could read reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. It's in a nice clean interface. You can watch the trailer. It gives you the runtime, synopsis, theaters playing it, uh, playing it at another theater nearby. Who acted in The Help? Which one? The Help stars Viola Davis, Emma Stone, and Bryce Dallas Howard. So I wish you could like kind of dive in a little more and tap on these actors and see you know what exactly they've done. You can watch the trailer, you can buy it on iTunes, and that's basically all you can do for like video stuff. But it is convenient if you're watching a movie and you forget the name of the actor who's playing in there. Launch Angry Birds. Which app would you like to use? Angry Birds, Angry Birds, Angry Birds, or Angry Birds. <laughs> So you don't really have to dive through folders if you have a lot of folders. Um, you could pretty much just tell Siri what you want to do and open the game. You could update your Facebook. You could you could tweet with your voice. Send a tweet. Okay. What would you like to say? Testing out iOS 6. I updated your tweet. So you Ready can see. To send it? No. You can edit it here quickly and easily and send it. Okay, I sent it. Pretty cool, pretty simple. If you want to check out a restaurant review, give me a restaurant review for Bossa Nova. Okay, one of these restaurants matching Bossa Nova is a little ways from you. So this is the one I want to look for. You can see a bunch of reviews here. It's a really great restaurant. Check the reviews. Sounds pretty good. Um, you know, I could call and make a reservation. Some eventually restaurants you'll be able to make reservations right here with Siri, and it's pretty crazy. Make a restaurant reservation. When is the reservation for? 7 p.m. I found nine tables for two at 7 p.m. So if you're pretty open, Tap the one you want to reserve. If you're pretty open to you know eating wherever, you can easily just say you want to make a reservation at seven, and she'll show you everything that is available for seven. This is a new restaurant opened right here, right around the area, seven o'clock. I could tap make reservation and be done. So I could set up a shared photo stream, which basically is like, you know, a private photo stream just for your family. You could set it to be public so anybody can access it. Um, I'm just going to set this one up real quick and invite my mom to it. Adding pictures to your shared photo stream is pretty simple. I'm just going to go through a bunch of ones that uh, I did when I was home visiting family. Lots of pool pictures and fun jumping in the water stuff and just show you that. And it's going to add up to my shared photos for my family stream. And you can see right here, here's family. I got six new pictures. People can look at them that are in my group. They could leave a comment right here. And there you go. You have a little comment here. My mom can add a comment. And this is her jumping into the water, looking crazy. Passbook is like your little movie ticket, Starbucks reward, Target reward card type of thing. If you have gift cards, if you have boarding passes, you know, anything like that, you could set up all these different things here, as you can see, uh, boarding passes, tickets, store cards, coupons, blah, blah, blah. So here it just shows you the apps that are compatible right now with uh, Passbook. Um, I guess I have to update my Fandango one. So anything I buy on Fandango, it will show me the, the ticket right in my Passbook. It's a great thing to have if you have a boarding pass, you know, and your gate changes, it'll automatically update you, it'll send you a notification, you know, depending on your time and location, wherever you're at, um, you know, telling you that your gate changed. Uh, you could easily scan your boarding pass right through here. You could use your Starbucks card, you know, make payments with that. This is not like Google Wallet, this is kind of like the preschool before that. Um, it's not going to make like credit card payments and stuff. This is more for like tickets and cards and gift con gift uh, cards and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's Passbook. Settings gets a makeover as you can see here. We have Bluetooth easily accessible right here in the front and center. We have new Do Not Disturb. We have new privacy settings which allows you to like turn off certain things from you know tracking and all that sort of thing. 
Do Not Disturb is one of my favorite settings, so if you turn it on, you can basically send every call to voicemail. Uh, you know, if you just want to enjoy a movie or something and not be bothered, you can do that by clicking Do Not Disturb. But you want to cl click here to Notifications, and then go into the Settings here. I don't know why they moved it over there. We have it scheduled to have a quiet time. Say we have 7, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., where I don't want any phone calls waking me up in the middle of the night. What happens if somebody gets an accident or like family or whatever? We can set up to allow calls from whoever we want. Favorites, contacts, you have to set things up in groups. Um, you have to do that through the computer. I don't know if I found out a way to do it through here, which is a little confusing. But you can add anybody to your list of favorites, um, which is convenient. So anyone in my favorites list gets to bypass this you know, firewall of you know, silence and call me. But on top of that, for security, if there's somebody I don't know, if they're calling from like a payphone or someone else's phone, and it's an emergency still, they can call numerous times and still get through. So if I'm getting a call here, and I can accept it, I can decline it, but you can see here, I have this new thing here, I can reply with a message. If I'm in a meeting, and I could do something like that, send them a message right away. Boom. Simple as that. So you have two different ways. The phone is ringing right now. I could reply with the message, which I just did, or it could re remind me later, which basically declines the call, and um, it'll remind me later in one hour or when I get home, which I am home already. But um, as you can see that once I leave the location and get home, it'll remind me to call back that person. So it's a really great feature to have if you're driving, if you're in a meeting, if you just can't take the call right now, you can easily reply with some quick text. Um, they have preset messages, I'll call you later, I'm on my way, what's up? Or you can do a custom one like, shut up, I'm not talking to you right now. Um, messages like that, and you don't even have to worry about typing up or even seeing the text message screen. Really convenient, really cool. Um, I really like the features. I really do not like this new design scheme that they have, this, the UI, with this blue and this white. It looks very cheap, it looks like Android. Um, I'm not a fan of that at all. Uh, I like the black and the white lettering. It's just a lot cleaner, a lot more futuristic. This just looks cheap. Um, I don't know if you agree, just I'm not a big fan of it, but there's really nothing we can do about it unless we jailbreak our phone and go back to the original scheme. Another new convenient thing, if I'm typing an email and write from scratch and I want to attach a picture, usually you have to go to the picture first and attach it to the email, which is annoying. But now you just hold your finger down, tip over here, hit it, insert photo or video, tap family, throw the picture in here, hit choose, and there, bam, the picture's right in there, I can send it right to whoever I want to send it to, delete this draft. You have your VIP here, which is all my important people. Um, you can set whoever you want to be your most important, I just threw a couple people on there right now, some of my clients. Um, you have a VIP inbox, which is just exactly only your VIP people, so if you just want a reading work email, that's all right there. Um, you have your swipe down to refresh, which is really cool. It's like bloop. You can do that, and of course you have your all your inboxes, that type of thing. Uh, everything looks the same from where it is before. You get all your junk mail, that good stuff. You can finally now move and reorganize your mailboxes into whatever order you want. Um, usually it's set up with in order of how you set up your mailboxes and it was really annoying having to set up and move certain things to the top you couldn't do that now you could just simply drag and drop and hit done and be gone say we're going on a flight later and we're not going to have internet access or we go somewhere where there's not any data connection i wouldn't be able to read this later and um, access it i could just pretty much go to here add to reading list and it saves this web page offline so i could access it anywhere a really great thing is to have full screen and landscape mode, which adds a really beautiful interface. As you can see, here's my website right here. Everything looks really fancy on here. When you access full screen, all you have to do is come back down, and you can get your screen up on the top to know where you're at. You could go back a page. You could go forward a page. It gives you a very minimal interface um, while keeping your full screen, everything looking the same. YouTube app. It's no longer built in with the regular YouTube app that they've had. You have to download the special YouTube app that they have given you um, in the App Store from Google. The camera has gone through some changes. The camera button's a little bigger. You have a nice black side thing here. We also get the panorama feature, which is also available for the 4S, not just the 5. And I'm just going to give you guys a little quick 
panorama, what you have to do is try to angle it, and keep that arrow right on the line. It's going to be hard to do with two cameras in my hand, as you can see here. So I'm just going to pan across really slowly, seamlessly. You can see my trash sitting around in certain areas. And let that load. And hit, go back here to the main screen and check out our panorama. Go across. I don't really see any jagged lines. It looks very cool for something I just swiped over really quick and seamlessly. And show somebody your whole entire room. Bam! Music player gets a whole new update. Looks like the iPad app if you have the iPad version. Uh, everything is white, cr black and white chromatic. Um, everything is pretty much designed similarly the same. You can play a song here. This little interface changes. It looks a lot sleeker. Bigger buttons. All that cover flow that nobody uses is there. Um, you have these nice big buttons I like here on the bottom. Your, your volume control. You're not going to be able to see it here on the screen, but if you take your iPhone and put this little silver button here, if you move your iPhone around, you could actually see the reflection shine move around with it. It's a tiny little tweak that they did to just to make it look like real metal. Um, uses the gyroscope. Pretty crazy right there. The App Store gets a complete makeover. It looks so much better. Um, you're going to be tapping and swiping a little bit more than you're used to. As you can see, you could have to go to the left here to go through what's the amazing games on iPhone category. Um, they have free apps, new and newsworthy. You could search for apps just like before. You have your updates here. A very convenient thing is with your updates, you can just hit update all. You don't have to do that stupid sign-in screen. Um, that drove me crazy because we already bought the app, we already approved of it. Um, you know, it's annoying. If I want to check out what an app looks like, you get the screenshots first up front and center. Um, it's a lot cleaner. It's a lot easier. Um, I hated having to, you know, scr scroll all the way down to the bottom to see the screenshots. It tells you information about it. You can check out reviews here. You can like it on Facebook. You can see related apps. Um, that's that. The iTunes Store has been completely changed. It looks just like the App Store. You know, you're swiping left and right between you know, categories and sections, um, genres and top music charts. Um, you have your charts here. Text is a little small here, but it's not too much of a problem if you're holding it close to your face. You could preview music here. And you could continue browsing without losing that, you know, preview that's playing, which is very convenient because I like to browse the iTunes store and dig into other things and read. But up here you have your history item which uh, shows you everything you've previewed before um, across all your devices. It syncs through iCloud, so if you're on the computer or on your iPad, um, you can pretty much, you know, keep a record track of everything that you listen to. And, you know, if you want to buy a different track later, different point in time, or on a different device, you can do that. There are a bunch of new emoji icons, um, a lot of cool ones. Definitely going to use these a lot more. They're fun. I always use these. Uh, a monkey, see no evil, hear no evil. Everything is organized seemingly a little better. You could tap to tweet or post to Facebook just by tapping tap tweet. There you go, you have your messages here. Um, type whatever you want, blah blah blah, and post your tweet. And that's just a quick look at iOS 6. This is as quick as we can make it. Um, there's a ton of different features. We try to go over the main ones. Um, there are definitely other things that we found and we're going to find out and we're going to tell you about. Um, them and different videos that we have. We're going to let all these apps update very slowly. Uh, we have our iPad updating. Excited to get Siri on the iPad and um, have a lot of fun with the whole new iOS 6. Let's so make sure you subscribe to our videos, leave a comment, tell us if you're getting the iPhone 5, if you're going to upgrade to iOS 6 today as well, um, what your favorite new feature is, and uh, that should be about it. Check you later. Thanks for watching. See you soon.